Today we'll be talking about a procedure to do two anterior direct composite resin restorations and the procedures of which way to go with it as far as the different types of techniques and uh, layering and different ways to achieve a successful result in a quick amount of time. Uh, the first thing we'd have to look at before we start any procedure is, is the layering, the coloring, what colors may be beneficial to use. And so my in my personal best interest of looking at this, I want to set the patient up. A patient in the position they're in now, uh, you get overhead lights which can distort coloration of the teeth. So by setting them up and get exterior light from the window, we'll have a better idea of getting a more accurate color mix. As you can see, there are multicolors in Daniel's tooth here. And so when we start looking and studying the whole tooth and the anatomy of the teeth. Generally, we like to look, and of course, there's an incisal edge on number eight here, as well as uh, quite a bit of number seven here that we're going to be replacing. And so we start looking from the gingival area, which hopefully we're not going to be getting into any of that today, to a body area, which is the mid portion of the tooth. And then we also want to look at the incisal areas as their translucency, the things we would do to enhance is their surface anatomy in the tooth. A lot of different factors we have to play in that can make the success or failure of an anterior direct restoration. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for a color that's going to be in the general basic body shade of the aesthetics shade guide here. And as you can see, the general body of the tooth here, and again we're just looking, we're going to express some out on the tooth before we start is getting pretty close to a, a B1 shade here, maybe a little bit lower value than that, maybe a mixture of B1, A1 here is what we want to look at. The first thing I like to try to do here is before we ever start, before we dehydrate the tooth or start any process, is to express out a little bit of the color that we've selected here, which the uh, body shade is, is approximately a B1. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna bond, I'm not gonna cure, I'm going to express a little bit of this out here on the tooth and then I, from there we'll just kind of thin this out a little bit just to get an idea if we're going to be in the right shade or family and then I'll also express out a little bit. He has some tr incisal translucency. So I'll put a little bit of this out here on here just to kind of get an idea if the amount of translucency we need in a tooth here. And so what I'll do is, is kind of get this out on the tooth and then I definitely want to light cure this for about 10 seconds. And then I can step back and look to see. Sometimes it's amazing how the shades, values and things will change from leaning back versus setting up. And then we can look here and see that the body shade is, is very similar to what we're looking for in the central portion of the tooth. Obviously we don't need quite that much translucency. And so the next step of the process will be able to go ahead now, I'm going to lay out this. We may even need, and we'll talk about in a moment, a little bit of the, the opaque color in this number seven because there's more of the tooth missing than this little edge here on number eight. So now the next process would be to get, get this off here. And then from there, we'll go ahead and lean the patient back, give anesthesia, and get started with the process. And I do want to talk, there's two ways I guess to, to look at doing this process. One, we could freehand this. And by freehanding it's just literally standing over the patient and sculpting this. Now in a case maybe this small you probably could get away with this, especially number eight. Number seven, because there is a lot of decay here, we haven't removed this and there's a lot of other things, we don't know how extensive this will be. I like to, in cases like this, is to have a matrix. There's several ways you can look at these anterior restorations depending on how much tooth structure you're replacing. Uh, when Daniel came in uh, a couple of days ago, again he was missing several incisal edges here due to decay and uh, several other things. And so at this point what I could do, and again you can freehand this it, it, if you want a more predictable way. While he was here, we decided to take a quick uh, impression of his teeth and then from that impression, which we had here, I uh, quickly took some wax on my own in the back and I waxed up a contour that may be acceptable for us to have a matrix to make of this. From this I took the Aquasil Easy Mix Putty and made a matrix of the new incisal edge position. 